Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Westfall, and today's video lecture is RGB and hexadecimal and how computers make colors. But first, what is RGB? Well, let me explain. All colors, whether they have names or not, can be described by the level of red, green, and blue light it takes to make them. This is called an RGB value. Each individual color in RGB is represented using numbers, those numbers being 0 through 255. So the color red has the potential value of... 0 to 255. Green has the potential value of 0 to 255. And blue also has that same potential value of 0 to 255. So let's just focus on the color red for a minute. Knowing that red has a potential value of 0 to 255, let's play around a little bit with the numbers and see what it does. So here is an example of red with the value of zero. Yeah, it's black. Now I've ramped the value up to 65. Here's 128. I've ramped it up now to 192. And lastly, here is 255. So I'm going to ask you this. What happens when we increase the value of red from a value of 0 to a value of 255? If you don't know the answer to this, you might want to rewind the video and watch that last 10 seconds again. Note that we can do this with the green and blue values as well. So we're not limited to 0 to 255 with just red. We do this with the green and blue values as well. Now, you may be wondering, how can we make colors other than red, green, and blue? And I'm glad you asked. So to do this, we mix the different RGB colors together. Different values of R and G and B will give us different colors. So for example, if I want a yellow, we have a 255 value for the red, 255 for the green, and 0 for the blue. For pink, it'd be 255 red, 102 green, and 255 blue. And 102 red, 51 green, and 0 blue makes the color brown. And of course, we don't have to stop here. Using this system, we could represent basically any color in the spectrum. So, what does this have to do with hexadecimal? Well, as you know, you could represent each color with a number from 0 to 255. But 
you have to remember that computers don't really like the decimal number system. We can also represent these numbers using binary. However, to represent the numbers 0 through 255, I have to use 8 binary digits for the red and the same for the G and the B. So that's a lot of zeros and ones. In fact, it's 24 zeros and ones to represent a color. So for example, I want to make the color pink on my website. I'd have to program it like this. 1111111111100110111110. One, 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 zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 one. That is a lot of work. Thankfully, there's an easier way. Yay. Instead of typing long strings of binary numbers, computer programmers decided that hexadecimal would be an easier system. The nice thing about hexadecimal is that we can use one hexadecimal digit to represent four binary digits and two hexadecimal digits to represent eight binary digits. So here is an example of what I mean. Okay, we have one zero one zero, that is four binary digits that we could represent with one hexadecimal digits. And one zero one zero, one zero one zero, we have eight binary digits there, and we're representing that using two hexadecimal digits, A, A. So essentially, it is a more convenient system because you don't have to do as much work. In my example of the color pink, note that there are eight binary digits representing the red. So the value of red is one, 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 which is 255. And if I convert that from binary to hexadecimal, it becomes FF. The color green is 102 in decimal or 1100110 in binary, which converts to 66 in hexadecimal. And the value of blue is yet again 255. Another set of eight ones which is the hexadecimal equivalent of FF. So, the color pink is represented using hexadecimal as the number FF66FF. If you compare that to the binary equivalent of the same color, you will see that hexadecimal is really much shorter and much less of a pain in the butt to program. And again, using this system, we could represent virtually any color. How does this relate to what we've been learning in class? Recall from an earlier lab that a digital image is made up of little dots called pixels. And if we zoom in on a picture like this, we can see the individual pixels. Each of these individual pixels can be represented by a number, which is expressed as a hexadecimal number.